Remasters, remakes, HD collections? Chances are that you have at least one of these floating around in your game collection. With a few exceptions, remasters generally improve upon the original game in every way. Sometimes the improvements are small, like a simple resolution boost to make playing the game more enjoyable on a modern HD TV. Or sometimes the changes are more drastic, and the original game is completely rebuilt from the ground up. Today I want to focus on a remake that did the latter, one that people don't seem to talk about very often, and that game is Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes. First things first, I love Metal Gear Solid. I love the stealth gameplay, I love all of the strange little world building details that these games have, and I even love trying to make sense of the series' absolutely insane story. I played through every single game in the series, and I love all of them. Ugh, except for you. So when I was a kid and I heard that the original MGS was going to be remade, I was thrilled. I remember renting the game from Blockbuster, popping it in my GameCube, and burning through the entire game in a weekend. I loved it then, and I still love it today. But why, as of 2019, is this game still isolated to the GameCube? After all, the Resident Evil 1 remake was originally a GameCube exclusive, but Capcom has since released that game on every platform known to man. Why can't I play an HD version of The Twin Snakes on my PS4? There's no definitive answer, and information is sparse, but there are a few clues that might point to an answer. The Twin Snakes was released in March of 2004. It is a remake of the 1998 PS1 original. The game was co-developed by Silicon Knights and Konami of Japan, with oversight from series creator Hideo Kojima and Nintendo's own Shigeru Miyamoto. Silicon Knights handled the vast majority of the game's development, with Konami only stepping in to make sure that the game's cinematics were presented in the correct signature Metal Gear style. At the time, Silicon Knights were in the middle of an exclusivity deal with Nintendo, having just released Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem. The Twin Snakes would be the studio's final Nintendo exclusive. Some of the updates to the original game include a complete visual overhaul, new soundtrack and voiceover, the addition of a first-person viewpoint, and the ability for Snake to hang from ledges and skip codec calls. The game was released to mostly positive reception from critics, but it was a bit lacking in sales, having sold just under half a million copies worldwide. The game still holds up today. However, after not playing this game since it was released, I did struggle with a few issues with this version of MGS. First off, the game is dark like really dark. The first vent that you enter from the helipad is pitch black. If you're playing on an HD TV, you will not be able to see anything. I cranked up the brightness on my TV just to get through this part, but even then it was next to impossible to see where I was going. The first person controls are a bit awkward and will take some getting used to. Speaking of the first person view, one of the most common complaints about this game is that the ability to enter first person completely breaks the sniper wolf boss battle, which it does, but still the full MGS story and experience is here and it's never looked better. So it sounds like the game was mostly a success, right? It seems like it would have been a perfect candidate for a modern remaster. So why haven't we gotten one? Let's start with Silicon Knights. After their exclusivity deal with Nintendo expired, the studio went on to experience a long list of problems. The studio's next game would come out four years later on the Xbox 360, Too Human. A game that was plagued with problems from its inception. It was originally planned as a PS1 game and it spent 10 years in development hell until it was finally released. The game was greeted with less than stellar reviews and sales, and as such, its planned trilogy was cancelled. But that's not the end of Two Humans' woes. The game was built with Epic Games' proprietary Unreal Engine 3. After seeing what the engine was fully capable of in Gears of War, the folks at Silicon Knights were convinced that Epic had licensed them an incomplete version of UE3. Silicon Knights sued Epic in July of 2007. Epic Games filed a countersuit in August of that same year. Some years passed, and in November of 2012, Epic won the countersuit. Silicon Knights was forced to pay $4.5 million, and all games that Silicon Knights made with Epic's engine were ordered to be recalled and destroyed. This included Two Human and Silicon Knights' final release, X-Men Destiny. The combination of legal troubles and poor sales of Two Human and X-Men left the company in a bad way. Silicon Knights filed for bankruptcy and closed its doors on May 16, 2014. But where does this leave the Twin Snakes? It is unknown where the source code for the Twin Snakes was kept, or if it even still exists. But Silicon Knights was the primary developer of the game. It would make sense that they would be in possession of the code. It's very possible that the game's code could have been lost among the developer's financial woes and rumored mismanaged, hostile work environment. Now onto the second piece of this puzzle. What about Konami? Oh, Konami. 
what have you become? The once great studio behind Metal Gear, Castlevania, Contra, and many other timeless franchises has shifted its focus to pachinko machines and half-baked cash grabs of their popular franchises. Oh God, no, not you again. The credits of the Twin Snakes do state that the game's production and copyrights are owned by Konami. But if that's so, why wouldn't they have added the Twin Snakes into 2011's Metal Gear Solid HD collection? It is possible that the source code still lies with Konami. And if that's the case, we may never ever see the game get a remaster. This is the same company that lost the original source code for Silent Hill 2 and 3, and they have a tendency to do the exact opposite of what their fans want. And this brings me to the final part of this equation. The big N, Nintendo. The house that Mario built is notoriously tight-lipped about their inner workings, but it is possible that through their joint partnership with Silicon Knights and Konami, that somehow Nintendo came away with indefinite exclusivity rights to the Twin Snakes. There is no clear answer, and this is mostly speculation, but this seems like the most likely reason to me. If Silicon Knights developed the Twin Snakes under the same terms that they had developed Eternal Darkness, then Nintendo would retain exclusivity rights for the game, as well as any potential for a future remaster. This theory seems to hold up even more when in 2017, Dennis Dyack, the former head of Silicon Knights, replied to a tweet asking if it was possible for the Twin Snakes to release on the Switch with a short and sweet, yes. This would make sense considering all of the recent rumors of a GameCube virtual console coming to the Switch. So all in all, there is a glimmer of hope for the Twin Snakes to be re-released. Even if it isn't a full remaster, a virtual console port is definitely better than nothing. What games do you think deserve a modern remaster? What did you think of the Twin Snakes? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching and see you next week.